In accordance with section five of the Open Public Meeting Act, be advised that a notice of this meeting was made by posting on the bulletin board in town hall and electronically forwarding to the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at town hall at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, December 15th. Meeting details and the draft agenda were also posted on the township website. Please stand to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice. May I have a roll call, please. Ms. Burstein? Here. Ms. Prupis? Here. Ms. Thal Eglo? Here. Mr. Wasserman? Here. Mayor Lieberberg? Here. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Reports. Good evening, Milburn Township residents. I'm going to keep my mask on. Today is Tuesday, December 15th. Since March 12th, that is how I have addressed my fellow constituents on numerous voice messages and emails. Tonight will be our last Township Committee meeting of the year. As we all know, 2020 began with such high hopes and an ambitious, and an ambitious agenda. But as they say, man plans and God laughs. Shortly thereafter, our world was turned upside down and we were confronted with a once in a century pandemic, COVID-19. Before we begin our formal business this evening, I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge those whose support and effort has enabled the township to weather these difficult times. Ironically, weather as we prepare for a major snowstorm. In addition, I'd like to review the township's accomplishments and also highlight some of the key issues and challenges that the 2021 Township Committee will need to address. I want to say, say thank you to our former mayor and fellow Township Committee member, Cheryl Burstein, for all her years of service to the Township. Ms. Burstein has been a member of the Township Committee since 2015 and served as our mayor from 2017 to 2018. It is particularly noteworthy that she dedicated herself to 21 plus committees during her tenure in addition to her mayoral responsibilities. As I read through all of her accomplishments, I do not believe that there was a subcommittee committee that missed her tenure. Planning board, joint meeting, Arboretum, Board of Health, Shade Tree, Parking Ad Hoc, Board of Rec, Litigation Steering, Finance, Historic Preservation, Environmental, Library Board, CEDA, Community Service, DMDA, South Mountain, Washington Traffic Ad Hoc, Mayor's Railway River, Board of Ed and Recreation Joint Fields. We appreciate your wisdom, your legal acumen, your sage advice, patience, and guidance through your tenure on the Township Committee Thank you so very much. Thank you. Can you see it? I hope you can. It's a little small, but okay. Okay, I'll, I'll read it for you. Thank you. Okay. The Township of Milburn recognizes Chef <laughs> Gerstein for her breadth of services to the community having served on the Milburn Township Committee from January 2015 
through December 2020, as well as serving as mayor in 2017 and 2018. On behalf of the Township of Milburn, we thank you for your dedication and service. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I would also like to say a few words about our incredible town hall professional staff. They are the ones for keeping the township operating. Without their unselfish and tireless support, our township committee could not get the job done. During this year of COVID-19, they are the unsung heroes. Christine Gaddy, our township clerk. We are grateful for your commitment and assistance every day and also noteworthy is your dedication to an all remote presidential election that was executed seamlessly. Shalini and the five J's that I had the privilege of working with on a number of administration events and installations, Jesse Molman, Jess Almeida, Jessica Camp, Jimmy Homsey and Jamie Hawkins, words seem inadequate in expressing our thanks for all your assistance. Thank you also to our professional partners, Kit Falcon, Ed Buzak, and Paul Phillips for your dedication and commitment to Milburn Township. It has been a challenging time for everyone and we appreciate your service. And last but not least, Alex McDonald, our business administrator. Let me share some thoughts about Alex. He's extremely dedicated implicitly honest, fair-minded, and professional. During this difficult and trying year, Mr. McDonald always put Milburn first and the safety of all the residents first. Alex has been my primary resource and trusted partner. He always takes my calls, no matter what time of day, night, weekend, holiday, and it is with my deepest gratitude that I say it has been a privilege to work with you and so very much appreciate your hard work and commitment to Milburn Township. And to my fellow TC members of 2020 and the 20, 2021 Township Committee, Diane Thal Eglo, Tara Prupis, Richard Wasserman, Thank you all for your service and your hard work and commitment to the TC. And to our newest members, Maggie Miggins and Sajid Vinayak, let me wish you all the best for the coming year. It is my fervent hope that when the Township Committee looks back at 2021, it will be a year filled with proud accomplishments marked by a full-fledged community engagement in all arenas. In looking back at 2021, the biggest issue facing the township without question was COVID-19. The duty as your elected officials on the township was to keep our citizens safe and provide whatever support and assistance that was needed. Through open communication, cooperation, and an adherence to the basics, mask wearing, social distancing, and hand washing, we were able to keep Milburn Township's infection rate relatively low and very manageable. During these difficult times, our residents volunteered their time and energy to make a difference. Unfortunately, time does not permit me to acknowledge each and every one of the individuals and groups that gave so unselfishly of themselves. But let me just name a few. Our police, fire and DPW all worked very hard and together. The Milburn Volunteer First Aid Squad was indispensable and became a critical part of our infrastructure. The mask lady and her team that sewed thousands of masks, the Milburn High School students who made masks and protective wear, the young children who decorated stones for isolated seniors, the young heroes who made snack bags filled with inspirational message for our first responders and hospital workers our Chinese community who made substantial financial contributions and provided protective gear to our frontline medical staff and first responders. The Board of Ed who donated lab equipment and goggles for essential workers at Newark Beth Israel Hospital when PPE was in short supply. The flag group in the chamber 
that raised thousands of dollars and gave to our restaurants, who in turn provided meals for our first responders. And finally, our own food pantry that was a lifeline for those experiencing food insecurity. There are so many occasions that I've been moved to tears by the kindness and generosity of our citizens. I remain forever grateful to be a part of this community where so many are looking for ways to give back and contribute to the greater good of the community and our neighbors. At the beginning of 2020, I listed three goals. Improve the downtown business district, drive social and civic engagement, strengthen and expand our arts and cultural programs. As I look back, I believe we, working together, made progress on all these fronts. Let me highlight some of the accomplishments of this team. During the pandemic, we closed Main Street for many weeks. It was a resounding success. It created a stronger sense of community, engagement, participation, and helped vitalize our downtown. I remain hopeful that we can build and expand on this highly successful initiative. Farmer's Market. We followed all the protocols and provided our residents and visitors with a healthy and fun activity on otherwise quiet Tuesday afternoons. Kudos to our rec department for sponsoring movie nights at the high school parking lot. It was very well received, especially by families with young children. This and similar activities should become part of the township's entertainment programming. A recently installed mural in the alleyway next to Goldberg's provides a bit of color and a nod to our mill wheel past. The CETA committee with township approval will be breaking ground early next year in Taylor Park on a permanent sculpture and seating area all together now by artist Michael Cooper. A bid SID, Explore Melbourne Short Hills, was created to increase business activity in all five of our business districts and will work closely with new and existing businesses to drive revenue and participation. An Airbnb ordinance was also passed to control short-term rentals and protect and preserve our residential neighborhoods. Finally, as a township, we should be very proud of our Black Lives Matter march and rally in the late spring that was organized entirely by our students. Our local political and spiritual leaders attended as well as Congressman Tom Malinowski. This peaceful march was made up of nearly a thousand of our residents and neighboring citizens. We learned of the fears, frustration and heartfelt sadness of people of color. As we approach 2021, I hope the township will move forward with the Human Relations Advisory Committee to address all of those needs and make Milburn Township an even better place to live for all of our residents, regardless of race, creed, color, or sexual orientation. 2021 promises to be an interesting and exciting year for for two very important reasons. First, Milburn will be given some clarity with respect to its affordable housing obligation. Second, as a result of the leadership efforts of Deputy Mayor Prupis and Committeeman Wasserman, the township is engaged in a comprehensive visioning plan for our downtown. Please go to the website and complete the survey if you have not already done so. One of the many great and innovative ideas that has, was put forth was a railway river walk and further connectivity from the reservation to Taylor Park. I am confident that with even greater input from our residents and other stakeholders, the vision plan will provide necessary direction and impetus that will make our downtown a thriving destination for shopping, living, and entertainment. In closing, let me encourage all of our residents, both young and old, to get involved in local government. You can volunteer for committees, You can even run for township committee. Hey, you never know. Look no further than Cheryl Burstein, Diane Thaleglo, or myself. You could be mayor. Many thanks, and let's move our agenda forward. Thank you. I'll start with our committee reports, and then I'll turn it over to Ms. Burstein after that. 
Currently, we have 374 cases of COVID-19 in the township. Essex County is reporting 41,728. 83% have recovered. These are cumulative numbers and, and everyone is still counted as part of the total. Essex <clears throat> County continues to offer free testing for all residents six days per week. Monday, 3.30 to 6.30, and Saturday, 8 to 12, at the Essex County South Mountain Rec Complex. Tuesday and Friday, 8.30 to 11.30 at Weequake Park. Wednesday, Essex County Department of Public Works in Cedar Grove. Thursday, 3.30 to 6.30 at the airport in Fairfield. Additionally, I was on a call this morning, Essex County will be receiving both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. We anticipate distribution and the vaccine program will begin approximately December 26th for first responders, hospital workers, and long-term care facilities will be prioritized to receive the vaccine. The Milburn residents will be able to get this vaccine at the Livingston Mall at the Sears building. The hours will be 10 to 5.30. This will take some time that we anticipate our residents at a later date and the information as soon as we have it will be forthcoming. Rigorous protocols will be observed. There will be both an online sign up as well as a dedicated landline for sign up. As soon as we have the information where we, we will be sharing it on all our communication channels. Additionally, Anyone wanting to volunteer both as a medical professional or an, administrat an administrative capacity, you can sign up online, vaccine help at admin.essexcountynj.org. We will put that on our website as well. As you know, our numbers are increasing and we must continue to be vigilant about social distancing and mask wearing. Additionally, Governor Murphy has put in restrictions for a maximum of 10 individuals for indoor gatherings at home and as well as uh, indoor sports are canceled except for professional and college teams. I do wanna make note that our rec department has set up a variety of outdoor programs for our youth. Please visit the rec website and register and participate. Our Explore Milburn Short Hills bid has worked very hard to decorate 16 beautiful windows and storefronts. And they've also created a gift basket giveaway. There are 26 retailers participating, no purchase necessary. The drawing will be on January 4th, 2021. They are three amazing uh, baskets. Uh, they're worth the, the retail value is about $1,000 per basket. And I just want to mention the retailers that are participating. Bacconi South, IQ Opticians, F45 Training, Green Nectar Market, haagen Karen Wolf Interiors, Live Bread, Milburn Camera, Milburn Pet Shop, Paper Ribbon and Wrap, Club Pilates, Teen Skin, Book House, The Standard, Artie Vino, Milburn Deli, Schultz and Blaustein, Shala, Studio 1200, Garden State Hemp, Clean Ale, Linda's Flores, Splurge Bakery, Moonshine, One River, and Cafe Monet. Please, residents, shop local. Please also be advised that December 17th at 8.30, our closed session will be moved to 100% virtual via Zoom in anticipation of the pending storm. Meeting details have been posted on the front door. That concludes my reports. Ms. Burstein? I don't have any reports, thank you. Ms. Thal Egla? No reports. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Oh wait, I'm thank sorry, I do wanna say one thing. I was on that Zoom call with the county with you, Jackie, and it is an unbelievable setup that they have announced what they, it's gonna be available. I mean, it's a, as I think it was Phil who said, it's a Herculean undertaking. It's incredibly impressive. And when it 
rolls out, I think it's going to be incredibly successful and give us all a lot of peace of mind. Thank you. So I sit on the senior advisory uh, committee and um, the senior programming this year looked extremely different. And Jamie Hawkins, who is a uh, senior citizen coordinator Correct. and, and runs all the programming in the town, which is really extensive for our senior community. She created a video to kind of highlight the year. And so we're gonna play it for you tonight. And um, Jamie, just thank you for all the hard work that you do for our senior population. So Jimmy, you got that? Yeah. Okay, great. a great review and uh, just a testament to our community and how we're um, all able to pivot this year. So um, Jamie, thank you. And I just also wanted to um, speak a little bit that our senior population, we are definitely communicating to them about our vision plan. Um, 
this the whole process and making sure that we are reaching out to them specifically as a population to get them involved. So that is the senior report. The, um, the visioning, so we, uh, steering committee met again with uh, Perkins Eastman. We also did, a de we did like an internal debrief from our Thursday night, um, our first public virtual engagement, which was we had had uh, close to 200 people registered, 138 people ended up participating that night. And we were told by the planning firm that that was like an incredible turnout. So we were all really excited about that. And um, we are just continuing the outreach. The public survey is still available until Friday. Can we, can we show that? Sure. Alex is just going to show the website for that. Um, just if you haven't taken the survey, you can also post on the wall, the comment wall, without taking the survey. Or if you've already taken the survey and you want to go back and check the wall or comment, you can do that by Xing out the survey so you don't have to take it twice. Mm -hmm. And then we, there will be another public engagement. There'll be another survey in February and then another virtual public engagement as well. And then we'll continuing um, we'll be continuing other outreach uh, initiatives with the steering committee so that this will be an ongoing conversation throughout the next few months. Okay, so just to uh, explain how to get to the, the survey, um, one is we've got a couple other news stories that are happening obviously with the snowstorm, but first and foremost, you would go under the business tab and go to downtown area vision plan. As you see here, click on that. Um, it will come up and show that the survey is on the right hand side, as you see here, interactive survey. You click on take the survey, it'll push you out to um, the survey link. And it's just going to take a little, little second to load here. Okay. And what will happen is you'll get a, uh, a pop-up box and it'll say, you know, uh, sort of a short blurb is say, take the survey. Now, <clears throat> once you click on that, then it's really up to you um, where you want to go. If you would like to take the survey and haven't taken it yet, it is right here on the left-hand side. You can scroll down through, you can see the various questions that are associated with that. Keep in mind that not all of these questions are uh, required. Um, in particular, uh, the ones that are starred are required. However, we've gotten some questions about the, uh, the salary question. That is optional and does state um, that it is optional. You do not have to fill it out. Um, and there is just a brief uh, uh, term agreed to terms and conditions. You do have to click that to submit it. To get to the social pinpoint wall, all you have to do is X out of the survey there, and then you can participate in the uh, social pinpoint wall, as you can see, uh, we've had a quite a bit of uh, discussion going on here, uh, a lot of participation on that wall. Uh, people can like or dislike particular comments. It's all anonymous, but it gives uh, the Perkins Eastman a sense of, of how, those, how those various uh, ideas or thoughts are doing. Uh, but again, you do not have to take the survey. You can X out of that and then interact in the wall under one of these six categories, uh, whichever uh, is, is of most interest to you or all of them. That's it. Thank you. And so just a little bit more about um, the whole visioning process. Uh, Perkins met with PSAB and in that meeting was also um, Dr. Meyer and Dr. Burton and uh, Mr. Conley from the middle school. So make, and the Washington school principal, forget me, forgive me, I don't remember his name, but um, just to make sure that the schools are involved in this conversation as well. And um, they're going to be meeting with uh, the property owners, the commercial property owners have been reached out to to have a meeting between the property owners and uh, Perkins Eastman as well. So I, I think we're covering all bases in terms of engagement and different focus groups. But if you are um, feeling like your voice isn't being heard or you have interest or you just um, have any questions, please reach out to me or Richard or the steering committee. And um, Okay, so the next thing also along that path is that 
on 11, um, on November 2nd, Bike Walk Milburn, that they had their first bike walk. Okay, so we had the tour to Milburn and that was a great success. And then kind of out of that, we've been creating um, interest for Bike Walk Milburn, which is a nonprofit, which is going to be Jennifer Duckworth is um, leading that with Jorge Mastroprieto. And it's gonna kind of also be working with PSAB. So, and then the Bike Collective was formed. So the Bike Collective, uh, they've been taking, there's a, a, a gentleman in town and he takes the bikes, he refurbishes, takes, been taking the bikes from the DPW. Alex, feel free to like oh, jump in at sure. any point. Connor, and Connor, Connor yeah, yeah has been taking the bikes, <laughs> um, refabbing them, and then they are going to be distributed out to people. And tomorrow, uh, Family Promise, which used to be Interfaith Hospitality Network, we were able to match a bike for each of the children oh, at Family sure. Promises. So that is all happening tomorrow morning. And I just wanna do a huge shout out to Jen Duckworth for all the work that she does for our community and putting this bike work, this bike collective together and Alex and Jesse uh, moment to kind of to bring this all together. There's just incredible work being done in the town on all fronts. So Tour de Milburn is expanding. And if you are interested in getting involved with that or Bike Milburn, they're, um, I like believe there is a there's a page website. there's a page under the PSAB or the Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board page, uh, which you can uh, you can show your interest uh, in that in that event. Okay, perfect. So that takes care of that report, and then I think um, the last report is to Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, you are my last report. <laughs> oh my goodness. So um, so I don't really write speeches or scripts or anything. Um, so we're just gonna do this off the fly, but in the um, microphone. No one's oh thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Diane. So um oh my goodness, thank you so much for just leading us through this incredibly bizarre, insane year and with grace and integrity and patience and kindness. And everybody loves you and appreciates um, all you have done for our community and how you have stood in front of us and for us and with us. So just from the bottom of my heart, and I know I am speaking for so many people in our community, thank you so much. And I just, um, I have so appreciated working with you. It's, and you've taught me so much. So. Thank you. Um, I want to, we have this plaque for you. I mean, this plaque, I'll, I'll read the plaque and then I'm also going to read down and, and we have a chair. <laughs> and, um, and Cheryl, just so you know, your chair is coming to you at home um, tomorrow morning as well. Thank you. And um, so the Township of Milburn recognizes Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg for her breadth of services to the community having served on the Milburn Township Committee from January 2018 through December 2020, as well as serving as mayor in 2020 and deputy mayor in 2019. On behalf of the Township of Milburn, we hereby thank you for your dedication and for your service. Thank you so much. So there's, um, I just wanna read some of Jackie's uh, formal accomplishments. So Jackie has been on the township committee, served as from 2018 to 2020, served as deputy mayor in 2019, mayor in 2020. She served on the Cora Hart Torn Arboretum Board, the Board of Health, Parking Ad Hoc Committee, Finance Ad Hoc Subcommittee, Advisory Committee, CETA, Community Service Award, Downtown, the DMBA, the District Management Corporation Board of Trustees of, um, Evolve, uh, Evolve Milburn, uh, Explore Milburn, Explore, Explore Milburn. Milburn. <laughs> yes, we're getting there. Um, the DPW Facility Review, the Board of Education and Recreation Joint Fields, Board of Education Liaison, Pedestrian and Circulation Traffic Ad Hoc Committee. I think what you will most be remembered for is bringing the arts to Milburn with all of your CETA initiatives, 
starting with the mill wheel project and the mural or the panels and this incredible Taylor Park art project. And I know that you're gonna continue on CETA, which is amazing. And I know that you are gonna continue with the SID, thank God, and <laughs> usher us and lead us through. And um, just also the the boxes, the, the utility, boxes. utility boxes, which are amazing <laughs> in town. And so we have art in this town because of you, Jackie. So thank you. Um, and I'm, I just, I know that you're gonna continue and be with us in next year and the continuing year. So again, just thank you for all your service. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I know Richard wants to jump in too. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <Can't laughs> I think you stole a lot of my uh, a lot of my thoughts, but <laughs> but I'll be I'll be short. I'll be quick. I just want you to know that all of the committees uh, that when you serve in the township in some capacity and you're on uh, any of these committees, just imagine hours and hours of work on behalf of the township. But uh, uh, you know, for each committee, it's a lot of hours of work, and uh, all of our volunteers, you know, have to always be thanked. It's a tremendous tremendous amount of work. But, um, but for Jackie, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, Jackie, I just want to thank you for being such an incredible colleague, mentor, friend. You spent, you spent this whole year beautifying our town with mill wheels, murals, artwork, uh, artwork on the utility boxes, and of course, plans uh, for art, the art installation in Taylor Park for next year. Under your leadership, we closed Main Street, supported our restaurants and our merchants, and the list goes on and on and on. So I don't wanna belabor the point. Uh, but most of all, Jackie, you offered us a calm and supportive voice in a very, in a very shaky time. And, and I think that, you know, we, we can't, I, I just can't uh, overemphasize that, that your calm and supportive voice, you know, would really helped our township and reassured our citizens and for that, you know, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you. I'm just gonna add my goodbyes to Cheryl. Um, yeah. I've worked with you my whole time on the committee <laughs> and Jackie, and um, yeah, we'll still be seeing you. <laughs> Terrific, thank I, you. I also want to thank Cheryl. Uh, you know, Cheryl, it's, it, you've, done, you've done so much hard work for the township and I, I just want you to know how much I, I appreciate it and our residents do also. And we will miss your legality, your legal points on things, Cheryl. For sure. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I didn't finish my, I just want to add a couple of things from my committee reports. Um, so this, the bid met um, and um, a couple of things. I just want to say that um, I want to, uh, uh, thank uh, Marla, because right now, if you go on, on Instagram, if you go on Facebook, you'll actually see that um, there are a lot of uh, Explore Milburn ads supporting our local businesses. And um, this hasn't happened for a long time. And, uh, and every day you'll see ads supporting our businesses and our restaurants. And that, that's all comes from, uh, from Explore Milburn. So, but, so thank you. Thank you so much, Marla, for doing that. Uh, also, you know, also, I wanted to mention that at the last meeting uh, of the Board of Trustees that we did engage uh, a concern, you know, from, uh, uh, from Mr. Futter uh, regarding our ordinance. Uh, and uh, the concern was that uh, in the ordinance, uh, Explore Milburn, the SID, we, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, you know, technically, uh, I guess it, it we're allowed or the organization is, is allowed to borrow money from a government aid, uh, entity, you know, uh, you know, technically allowed. Although in the in the last, you know, in the last DMDA and and the current, you know, and the current organization, you know, it's never happened. I don't think that I don't think that uh, there's any reason to believe that, you know, uh, there's any desire to borrow uh, money from a government agency. But if you go on the website and you look at the meeting you'll see that it was well discussed. Um, and the current board of trustees, uh, you know, they engaged it and um, there was a feeling like that there's definitely checks and balances. If, uh, if the SID ever wanted to borrow money, if there was any, you know, uh, you know, whatever the SID does financially, this 
you know, our committee has to approve it. So there's definitely checks and balances in place. And, uh, but it was well discussed if, you know, if you want to go, go to feel that, see it, see it uh, in person, you know, I mean, on, at the meeting. Uh, and the so, commercial property owners will never be um, yeah, that's right. And that came up any as Mr. McDonald pointed out, you know, we we've uh, we've yeah. looked into that and uh, we've done a, we've done an opinion on that that uh, that our that our commercial property owners would never be left on the hook if you know right. if that ever happened. Right. You know, that would not that's that's our understanding. And uh, so I just wanted to bring that up. He brought that to to my attention. He at the last committee meeting, I invited him to the SID meeting. Uh, and uh, and that was well discussed. So I just wanted to mention that. So I actually, was, I wasn't able to attend that night, but I did watch it yeah. last night. And I actually have a, quite a few questions I was gonna save for under old business. I don't think this would be the appropriate time, but I'll save that for old business. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, sadly, for the last time, and appreciate your kind words, and, and certainly, um, you know, appreciate all of your your leadership and and uh, uh, you know work this year. So, um, just have a few brief reports. Uh, I was asked to report, um, as many people know, um, the uh, Sachs former Sachs building is currently um, being worked on, and I just wanted to provide. Um, our constituency and uh, our community an update on that. Uh, I've reached out to my counterpart in Springfield and, uh, you know, have committed uh, with him to sort of keep in touch and keep abreast of the project um, uh, as often as possible and hope that I can report back to, um, to Milburn on that uh, every two weeks as we have our meetings. Uh, at this point, uh, they're currently in the process of doing asbestos removal. Um, Many, much of this work has to be done prior to demolition permits being, um, being issued by the municipality, uh, asbestos work, and then the rodent abatement will take place uh, on that property. Then Springfield will be able to issue demolition permits for uh, the former Sachs building. They expect that more toward the end of December, the end of this month, uh, where we may uh, see the demolition of that building, but there is fencing surrounding the property at this point. Uh, and it's uh, my understanding that construction access will be off of Morris Turnpike. Uh, but again, I'll update the committee as well as the community uh, as those as those come to me. Um, <clears throat> the second uh, quick thing is that, <clears throat> as everybody knows, and the mayor had mentioned, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, we will, probably, we will experience our first significant snowfall of the season. I just would like to ask our community to be prepared. Um, get, you know, uh, the, there is ex expected to be high winds uh, with this storm. It is an overnight storm. And we, you know, from an emergency response standpoint, we are thankful for that. Uh, we encourage everyone to stay off the roads. Do not travel unless absolutely necessary. Um, remember that uh, there are several several things to consider when you know shoveling snow and with drifting snow. We've placed all of this information on our website. We hope people will take a look at it and take that guidance. If your power goes out, report that to JCPNL. Uh, we got an important message from the Mountain Valley Emergency Communication Center as it relates to these types of storms. Uh, oftentimes, um, dispatch centers become overwhelmed. Um, uh, because people were calling to get updates on whether, you know, their lights and when they're going to be back on um, or are calling for uh, non exigent uh, type of uh, matters. We just encourage everyone call 911 in the event of emergency. Um, but, uh, but other than that, you may, uh, because of the call volume, experience some delays in response if you're calling for a non emergency matter. They will prioritize 911 calls. Um, Lastly, um, I didn't ask him if he minded, but I, uh, I wanted to congratulate Jimmy Holmesy. Uh, Jimmy has taken the uh, administrator position in Tenafly, New Jersey. Uh, we're very happy for Jimmy and, uh, and wish him the best of luck uh, in his uh, next step in his career. It's been a pleasure having Jimmy uh, beside me uh, the last four years. I know they'll do a great job there and serve their community well. So that's up for me. Congratulations, Jimmy. Mr. Falcon. Uh, Mayor, like uh, Alex, and I'm sure on behalf of Ed and Paul, I'd like to thank you for your 
generous remarks, and I have no report. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the October 6th Township Committee minutes? Motion. And second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we now have a presentation from the Milburn Short Hills Historical Society website and special projects. Mr. Sorkin, you're on deck. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Well, you know, first I wanted to, before anything, I just wanted to thank Mayor Bursina and Mayor Lieberger for all that you've done for our town. Um, we've spent a lot of time together over the last few years, both inside and outside of town hall and your friendship and support has meant so much. And, you know, from a personal standpoint, Cheryl, Jackie, the feeling of partnership that I felt with both of you inside that building will be missed. And Jackie, it means a lot to me to be able to say that to you tonight. So thank you both once again for all you've done for our community. Thank you. Um, to everyone, I wanted to take just a few moments of your time this evening to update you on what's been happening with the Milburn Short Hills Historical Society. We've had a busy year with a lot of community support, especially from the Milburn High School senior class. So I wanted just to take the opportunity to recognize the class and share some of our newest initiatives. And I think, Jimmy, if I just go to share screen, right, and then go to PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. Can you guys see? Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, again, just a, just an update on what we've done this year from a student project standpoint, and then from the website uh, that I'll be telling you about. Basically, when we um, when we realized, especially this summer, that a lot of summer plans were canceled, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to develop some new content for the society through some student projects. The goal was to get a few interns. We thought we'd get a handful from the senior class. We ended up getting 51 summer volunteers, which obviously far and away exceeds the, the number we thought we'd get, which was just incredible. So what we did was we divided um, the volunteers up into five projects. The goal of the project was to engage the community, to connect the students with their hometown in a meaningful way, and to provide content for a new website. And that's what I'd like to walk you through this evening. So the first project is the, the walking tours update. So basically, I don't know how many of you are familiar with back about 30 years ago, the Historical Society created walking tours of Milburn Short Hills. There were a series of pamphlets developed in 1991 and they were, they were for sale in the Society Museum and they're self-guided tours that basically you walk around parts of town and you see get the history and the architecture within a defined area of the town. But obviously the pamphlets having been produced 30 years ago, they needed to be update in both content and delivery. So for the first project, what the students did was take these tours and not only updated them, but they turned them into uh, what are virtual walking tours. So these are actually GPS guided smartphone enabled tours. They're accessible directly from the website. So what you can do is instead of having the pamphlet, you can pull out your phone, you can sign on for the tour, your phone knows where you are. It'll walk you around town, guide you from stop to stop, show you the, the photos as well as give you a history of what you're looking at, the history, the architecture in the heritage. So it stays true to the original tours, but obviously things are updated. We've got new things there that didn't exist 30 years ago. Um, and we've got obviously a lot, a lot of things have been moved and updated. So this was a tremendous undertaking, both from a research standpoint and a technology standpoint. Um, we've got five tours that are available now. We've got downtown Milburn. We've got Short Hills Park number one, which is the Rackets Club area and the train station area. Short Hills Park number two, which is the Christchurch Highland Avenue area, the Wyoming neighborhood, um, the Veterans Memorial Path, which was actually done over the summer through an initiative with Town Hall, but because it's on the same platform, we're we able to include that as well. And then the Old Short Hills Road Tour, which is the Nottingham, Jefferson Parsonage Hill area, that's going to be uh, up and running shortly. Um, so we want to thank, you know, the students who took the time to put these together. We wanted to thank members of the Milburn Senior Class, Aiden Goldberg, Peter Grigoriev, Mason Hanwerger, Camila Kajeva, Luke Robinson, Max Rubin, Arjun Shanmagadas, Brett Simons, and from the board, Michelle Miller was, was the advisory in this project. So that's project number one. Next project is special place reports. And we thought that there's so much about historical places that we, you know, we, we have covered on the society website. There's a lot of places that people are still currently attending and, and visiting that aren't considered historical, but still warrant, you know, they've got a rich heritage and history and they warrant a little bit more recognition. So there was an opportunity to take initiative and do in-depth research on special places within our community. This, a lot of the students are 
involved with the history club at the high school. So we have reports for the Paper Mill Playhouse, the South Mountain Reservation, Taylor Park, the Short Hills Mall. And we've obviously left this open for expansive, you know, a lot more, there's a lot more that can be written about as, as things move forward. So um, wanted to thank Emma Brown, Anthony Chen, Abe Fitch, Rakita Mishra, Sachin Sahai, Milo Stone, Ji Xiao Ji, Michelle Zhang, and uh, Gene Wilde, the president who served as the board advisor for this project. Uh, project number three was a project of historical interviews. So this is a project to create an oral history of our community. And this has been done in the past through writing, um, but we've never really had the opportunity to use the website as a vehicle to, to archive and, and communicate an oral history um, with some of our residents. So we had the students create questions and conduct interviews with township volunteers. Unfortunately, it was, well, it is what it is, but it was mostly done over Zoom over the summer. So these were all virtual interviews, but they, the questions were, were fun and engaging. They asked, what are your favorite memories of downtown Milburn? What are the major differences in Milburn versus the past? What's an interesting story about Milburn that people might not know? Things like that. So what they did was engage a select member of residents. We have John Buckley, um, maybe you recognize him from in front of Dunkin' Donuts, uh, Dan Canizzo, Louise Gilly, who's 102 years young. She's been a township president since 1918. Of course, Mayor Hamoff, who was also the board advisor, uh, Mary McNett, Mike Roberts, former fire chief, and Vivian Steinberg. All of them were engaged and wonderful and, and, and the interviews are just delightful and engaging and they provide a history of our town that you can't get from, from anywhere else. And from stories about swimming in the pond at Taylor Park to what went on behind the scenes to get the first woman elected to the township council, to who had the best ice cream in town, to how it felt seeing the eight or nine abandoned cars at the train station the evening of the September 11th attacks. Um, you know, we've never been able to share something like this with the community before, and it's truly a gift. So thank you again to all the participants. And again, these will be up on the website. Can't wait to share them with you. Please take the time to, to go through them. They really are special. Uh, wanted to obviously thank the students who did the interviews here. They had a wonderful opportunity learning and engaging as well. Emily Shanjo, Mateo Shanjo, Ati, Gino Gawenya, Edwina Henry, Bill Kirschenbaum, Anna Lamakia, Tina Liu, DSCD, and of course, Mayor Hamoff, who served as the board advisor for this and really helped connect us with, with some of her, you know, some, some of her contemporaries. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so then project number four is kind of an extension of the historical interviews. We wanted to engage the next generation of Melbourne Township history. Obviously, everything we've seen this year is absolutely Melbourne Township history. So we started a series of video interviews with the goal of engaging each of the high school classes. Students, so the students reached out to members of the classes ending in 01, including their own for a series of video interviews. And the questions are just a bit more, a, a bit more geared towards the, the younger crowd. What was it like when you were growing up in Melbourne? In, you know, in, in your era. So questions included your favorite teachers, your favorite hangouts, your fondest memories of town, where did you get into trouble, things like that. This is still very much a work in progress, but it's, it's something that we're hoping can live in perpetuity on the website moving forward. We've been able to reach out to a lot of the classes over social media, and there's been a lot of enthusiasm for this project. So a big thank you to William Berezin, Megan Baim, Xanthi Miller, Safiya Rahman, Catherine and Olivia Regan, Lily Roth, Jacob and Lauren Updike, and then Carrie Ross, who's the board advisor for this. And then finally, the last project we did was the idea of doing a historical cookbook. So basically the historical society since its inception has always produced uh, a series of publications, mostly in pamphlet form. They're always available at the museum. There's a couple of them in the, in the corner of the, of the, of the um, screen there. So what we wanted to do is come up with a new idea for a new publication we felt that there's an opportunity to celebrate Melbourne's rich history of food and restaurants. So we had students reach out to current restaurant owners to share their history, their photos and their recipes, as well as do some research on past restaurants from the community to preserve their legacy. And this is another project that's still in progress, but it's basically a departure from the little black and white pamphlets that have been done in the past where we're moving towards, um, we've got basically a, a 200 plus page hardcover coffee table book full of recipes and history and photos and more from restaurants present and past throughout the town. Obviously the proceeds will be to benefit the Milburn Short Hills Historical Society. We're looking to publish this in the spring or the summer of this coming year, but we are taking pre-orders on the website along with a bit more of a preview of the book. And just to give you an idea of what's inside, we've got, and a big thank you to the, the current restaurant owners. There has been a lot of enthusiasm for this. Here's an example. There's a recipe from 
La Pergola, recipe from Common Lot, lots, so it is a cookbook. It's also a history book of restaurants from the past and places we've gotten a lot of community engagement and people contributing to what they remember about places like Christopher's and 40 Main Street with recipes from there as well. So it's gonna be a great book. It's a bigger initiative than we thought, which is why it might not be out till the spring, but it's, it's very much in progress and we're looking forward to sharing it with the community. So uh, for this, again, in addition to all the restaurant owners who participated in town, wanted to thank Lexi Abrams, Allison Aritan, James Chen, Stephen Cheng, Jacob Daniel, Ryan Fedroff, Alana Good, Kevin Hahn, Melanie Herbert, Mark Hubertus, Morgan Lasky, Abhi Mumaretti, Anthony Quain, Corinne Kwan, Arjun Singh, Michael Sorkin, Griffin Talbert, and Linda Eagle, who was the board advisor. Thank you to all of you for, for that. So those are the five projects. Um, what we wanted to do, obviously these projects would be meaningless if we couldn't share them with the community. So this is all leading up to a new website for the Historical Society that is gonna be launching later this week. I uh, wanted just to give you a bit preview of that now. So basically here's, uh, this, this is an image of the, the old or the current website. What we've done is we've taken this, we've given an updated look, uh, feel and interface. We've upgraded the technology. We've preserved a lot of the old features, but we have brought in a lot of new features and there's really a focus on community engagement, which is the objective of the project. So here's just a bit of a sneak preview of what's gonna be launching later this week. And I just like to walk you through some of the areas of note, um, but here's, here's the new Historical Society website. Um, one of the new features is an area for community projects. So right here, you'll see here's where all, all the student projects will be featured. You can go right here, one click gets you to a walking tour, one click gets you to um, the, the historical interviews, pre-order the book, the special place reports. So you can see that those are all on the website as well. But um, what's important about this section is it's expandable. We see a lot more community projects in the future. I know that there's been a lot of programs in the past done with the elementary schools, for example. So now there's a place for those projects to be housed and referenced and built, up, and built upon. And obviously we hope to, to continue a lot of these projects in perpetuity as well. So there's an opportunity for engagement and expansion that we're excited about. Another new feature is, this is called the archive, which I consider it's, it's the virtual, muse, virtual museum. And I do wanna take a step back and thank Lynn Ranieri who uh, retired from the Historical Society this summer, but she's been the official curator. She has been in that museum for years and years and years, archiving and cataloging and putting accessions together. And they've been done on paper. They've been stored in the hard drive of the, the Historical Society Museum, but there's never been an opportunity really to share all of the hard work that's gone into this. So. What we've done, again, you know, we had the easy part. Lynn's done thousands and thousands of these. We've now, we're now able to catalog them in the cloud and share them with the community. So we've got something called the archive. It's done through a, 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 a network that does this for historical societies all over the country, but we've created 21 categories. We've done 2,463 entries in counting. And I say in counting, because there's a bunch of us doing filing as we speak, this number will be up by tomorrow, but it's easy to browse for the community. It's educational, engaging, and fun. And it is like a walk through a museum that you can do right from your, your phone or your, your, your desktop. Um, just to give you an example, so you'll see the categories. Again, there's 21 of them, but um, we've got postcards, school memorabilia, home photos, photos of your, your house. You probably find an old photo of your house on there, old paper mill playhouse programs, township maps, fun mystery items. So just to share a couple of what, what, what we're talking about here. So here's one. This is under the, um, the community activities section. You can see a float from the Centennial Parade from 1957 in, in a write-up of, of that. Um, another one, I don't know if anyone knows anyone who went to Glenwood School, second grade, 1989-90, but there's a wall hanging that calls out the students in the class. Um, we've got a color postcard on Milburn Avenue in 1962. And I think my favorite one here is from, uh, this is from the archive section. There's a, for a $3 donation to Milburn High School junior class in 1983, you could go to the parking lot of the Short Hills Mall and, and eat a one foot section of the world's largest banana split. So these are just things that you can now sit and browse that have always been kind of housed on a computer, but now we're sharing them with the community, which, which is exciting for us. And finally, the last feature that's been updated, and uh, I, I couldn't end the presentation without talking about this, is there's now an opportunity to collect online donations and join the society and renew your membership right there from the website. Uh, in the past, this had mostly been done from pencil and paper, but now as you're browsing the site, you can sign up, you can renew your membership to the society. It doesn't cost a lot of money. As you can see on here, 15, 25, 
$35 for your family and everything we've done has been community supported and will continue to be. So hopefully when the site launches later this week, we'll send something out if you like it, if you enjoy what you're seeing, if we hope to get a lot more membership and a lot more engagement moving forward. So that is just what we wanted to share with the committee. And thank you again for your, for your time this evening. Well, all I can say, David, is wow. That's impressive. Let's, yeah. let's... You've been super pandemic busy, I must say. <laughs> and I want to thank you for, for, uh, for initiating and, and your leadership. Uh, wow. Wow. And, um, um, and thank, you, uh, thank you to all the uh, leaders of the special projects as well. Um, it's just a, uh, a trove of information and, uh, and we appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Jackie. I can't wait to see the cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Okay. Great. I want to remind everyone that this is a business meeting and the township committee meetings begin with the town, the business of the township and will end with public comment. There is no place in this meeting for denigrating or discrediting fellow residents, volunteers, or committee members. Going forward, yelling out from the crowd or showing disrespect for your neighbors or committee members will not be tolerated. If a member of the public disrupts the meeting, I will advise you with a warning that you're disrupting the meeting. And if it continues, you will be instructed to either be muted or leave the building. Public comments will be strictly limited to three minutes. And when 30 seconds are remaining, Mr. Homsey will state that and you may conclude your public comment. Each individual will be given one opportunity to make their public comment. Thank you for your cooperation. The committee will now consider consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions items are 20-229 through 20-236. Are there any comments from the committee with respect to the consent agenda items? Yes, I would like further and detailed explanation for my benefit and of the audience of Resolution 20-232 and 20-233. Can you provide that, Jackie? I, I, I will let Mr. McDonald answer those questions. Okay. Sure. Um, the authorization uh, or the approval of transfer of funds, um, each year the municipality throughout the year has the ability to transfer funds between line items within the department. However, in November, it becomes um, an operational um, ability to transfer between line items outside of a, a department or a particular, to a particular budget. Mm -hmm. In this instance, um, the resolution calls for a transfer from, uh, the, the, uh, from group insurance to um, salary and wage. I, don't, I just don't have it right in front of me, but oh, it's okay. salary and wage. Um, yeah, sure. Group, in, group insurance to legal. Correct, in the amount of $150,000 and from uh, group insurance to salary and wage for the police department. Um, again, this, when, it, when it is done between departments, it must be done by resolution. Is that because the funds weren't used? Uh, the funds in group insurance were not, uh, were not used and they're needed elsewhere sometimes. In a bu you, you know, when you budget, you're not, you, you're not gonna be 100% positive where things are impacted or not or utilized. Um, and in this case, uh, in particular, uh, under legal, as you know, the township is facing several different litigations. Um, therefore, that 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 line items expenses up, um, and in salary and wage, uh, the police department um, is also up. So, so where the legal funds come from? Since I gave that to you now, group insurance. Okay, and then the cops, because we hired five new officers. Four. Four. I keep thinking the, it's five. Yep. Let's, let's no. Yeah. That, 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 is, that is part of that. Right, so the Correct. next year that will have to go up because we're gonna have them on board and they'll have to be insured, et cetera. Well, th yeah, this is already sort of playing into that also, whether there are any overtime expenses this year as a result of COVID impacts and things like that. So okay. all that factors into it. And the other one, 233, the paper mill. Yeah, I so- I did read your memo and I really didn't understand. That. Okay. I, think that could be, I don't need that back. Okay, no, no problem. Um, so, so the township, um, 
uh, has, you know, in, in its uh, financial audit, um, several reserves. Uh, one of those is the paper mill uh, reserve. Uh, this is authorizing the cancellation of $250,000 from that reserve. This allows for flexibility into the 2021 budget um, of things that, you know, as we attempt, as we start to prep and prepare for 2021 and what that might mean um, in terms of, of, of the budget and different impacts and things like that, uh, providing the flexibility by canceling a small portion of this reserve allows us, uh, allows us to do this. By an audit standard, standard, it has to be done in 2020 uh, to be available for 2021. So that's why you see it on this agenda. Is this because the paper mill was closed and did had, weren't having any revenue? Uh, no, this does not have anything to do. It has to do with the rent? The, yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is the reserve in which some of that rent money went to. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from the committee with respect to consent agenda items? No, Mayor. No. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on consent agenda items only? Yes, my name is Jeffrey Field, 11 Alexander Lane, Short Hills, Jersey. First, I'd like to thank the mayor and council person, a TC member Burstein for all their years of service. Um, and also, Jimmy, the best of luck to you. Um, really, mysterious circumstances brings us here together because one of the accomplishments that we've had this year, and I would like to thank everyone, is that the agenda is being posted more than 48 hours, and we are now being, get, for the last two meetings, being given access to the documents 48 hours prior. That is a major transparency accomplishment, and I applaud you for that. However, when you look at the bill list, I'm still asking, why don't we have the check register attached so we can understand what that lump sum is going to? Because of Oprah, we found out how much money we paid our municipal attorney this year. And that's an issue that this, this council and the next year's council is going to have to start looking at controlling professional services contracts. Um, also, when you have the amount for the artwork, I'm not against the artwork, but the question is, where is the funding coming from? Was that money allocated in this year's budget or is that gonna be paid for from next year's budget? And a lot of municipalities, when you have contracts approving amounts, there's usually a certification of availability of funds from the CFO, which allows the public and the, the gov local governing body to understand where the source of monies is coming. Um, the, I thank you for the analysis as to the authorizations of the transfer of funds, but the tax overpayments, we should also, because at the end of the year, have a feel of how much money we paid out this year in overpayments and whether um, we, at the beginning of the year, we have budget for this amount. Because as I said at the last meeting, we're gonna have a very big issue next year as to tax appeals. Because we know our two biggest revenue cases that either being the Hilton or the Short Hills Mall because of COVID mm -hmm. will be following tax appeals. So it's more about control. Again, thank you for the major change that we had in transparency, but there's still more to go. Um, again, thank you for your service. And I will speak as to some other issues because I have to rebut what Mr. Wasserman said it happened at the SID meeting. Jimmy, is there anybody? Uh... Yeah, we have two. Um... Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak before we go to the Just Zoom calls? <laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy. Thank you. You, you. you can ask them to rename themselves. Sarah? Yes. You can go ahead. Do you have a question about the, uh, the consent agenda? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Sarah, is your question about the consent agenda item or or? Yes, it is. OK, great. Proceed. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I think this has come up before. Um, I just want some clarification on the issue of the purchase of military grade equipment for the police department. Um, are there some specifics on that? Sure, I, I can shed some light on this. This is a resolution that's passed each year to allow the, the, the police department to uh, acquire surplus um, equipment 
from uh, from the military. Generally, generally speaking, this is you know can be boats, um, flood mitigation type of type of uh, equipment, um, or or uh, equipment such as uh, vests, or it can also be ammunition. It can be things like that. That uh, the most recent thing that we've acquired, and the only thing that, that we've acquired um, in the last few years because they're, they're constantly searching on that, looking if it's something that they actually need or if it's something that makes sense. However, uh, was, a, was, was a Humvee that is used as a high water vehicle only. That's, you know, we, thankfully we haven't had a reason to use that, but um, that, was, that was acquired through this, this, uh, this program. Thank you, that answers my question. Well, just the individual who's on Zoom and it ends seven five eight seven five three. Please rename yourself. Just give them a second to do that. But just give them a second to do that. But um, it'll be okay. Hi there, I would um, like to speak after someone else in the audience. I'll wait and lower my hand for now. Thank you. Dominique, this is just with respect to consent agenda items yeah, only. That's fine, thank you, I'll wait. I, I, I would not promote them to a panelist. Maybe we have them write a comment in the comments? Yeah, lower their hand. Oh, they're gone. Uh, no. That's just a monitor. Thank you. The security issue. May I have a motion to approve resolution 20-229 through resolution 20-236, which motion. are listed on the consent agenda item. Motion. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Burstein? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Fall Eglo? Yes. Mr. Wasserman? Yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Thank you. Next on the agenda is resolution 20-237. This is to authorize the execution of the stipulation of dismissal by and between the township of Milburn and the concerned residents of Milburn. Mr. Falcon, would you please be so kind as to give us a little commentary on this? Sure, this is the resolution I made reference to at the last meeting to uh, take advantage of the opportunity to dismiss this litigation. And this will affect that, allow the execution of the document. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve resolution 20-237? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Burstein? I think I'm recused. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Thal Eglo? Yes. Mr. Wasserman? Yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Burstein, you are scheduled to sponsor Ordinance 2566-20. Correct. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance 2566-20, ordinance to amend and supplement the development regulations and zoning ordinance of the Township of Milburn to permit short-term rentals as an accessory use in certain residential zoning districts. Um, the purpose of this ordinance is to make short-term rentals a permitted accessory use in certain residential zones under the zoning ordinance of the Township. Previously, we have um, enacted an ordinance to permit and regulate short-term rentals. However, what we didn't do at the same time was uh, permit them in any particular zoning district. So this ordinance is a complement to the previously enacted ordinance to allow it in certain districts. 
Tonight is the time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. Does any member of the public want to comment on this ordinance? Any member of the committee? I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and that the township clerk be directed to publish this ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with law. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Burstein? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Saul Eglow? Yes. Mr. Wasterman? Yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Wasserman, you are yes. scheduled to sponsor Ordinance 2567-20. Thank you, Mayor. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2567-20, Ordinance to Amend and Supplement the Development Regulations and Zoning Ordinance of the Township of Milburn and to adopt the revised official zoning map of the township. The purpose of this ordinance is to adopt an updated and revised official zoning map uh, of the township for inclusion in the development regulations and zoning ordinance uh, of the township to accurately depict the township zoning districts. And uh, Alex, you can correct me, but the, my understanding is that this is, a, it's pretty straightforward. This is just a, a, a an update that hasn't been done in, in quite, a, quite a few years. Correct, uh, correct. This map in particular, the updates in terms of the ordinances have been, but the map needed to be updated to reflect those, those changes um, and become color coded, look a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner and able to read also a layer on our GIS system. And this is on the, I believe this is also on the website this is on um, the spatial data logic open data portal, uh, which people can put this as a layer uh, over the parcels in Milburn. Right. So, so it's pretty. So my understanding is pretty straightforward. It hasn't been updated in, in quite a while, and uh, and that uh, this is pretty. This is a, a very positive update. Um, I just ask Alex a question. You have sent me the link, and I try to get on there, but you have to also put your password in. You can't just go right in from the Milburn website, or is I doing something wrong? No, no, you're correct. Um, okay. You have to sign up for the for the portal. Um, essentially, it's it's open to. I mean, it's open to anyone, but you need to sign up for the portal. Right. You can't just go in there from the website. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, tonight is the time for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with the law. I declare. I yeah, I declare the hearing open. My name is Jeffrey Field. I give you my address. Um, I just need to clarify a few things. You know this, we had to update our map. At the planning board meeting, when this was being considered, it wasn't listed on the agenda and there was no opportunity for the public to speak. When you start listening to the discussion, there was a question of finger pointing between the city engineer, the municipal planner, the board secretary as to whose responsibility it was either to keep a log of all the changes or for this this map to be done prior to this meeting i sent to every tc member a link to some documents i got from oprah it's very important that you start looking at the, the contracts that you approve for professionals i sent you four years of the, the city's municipal planners contract and how it changed we need to know what the duties were was it the duty of the municipal planner to be doing these updates so we don't have a problem where everyone starts pointing fingers 12 years later saying whose duty it was. It's very important that this does not happen again, that everyone knows their specific duty, whether it was the township engineer, the municipal planner, or the board secretary to keep a list of what all the changes are and to have an updated zoning map. Because I think it's about a 12 year gap from the last time this was done. It was very important that we know whose duties this are because the contract that you approved at the last meeting for the municipal planner does not even specify what his duties, his firm's duties are. It just says these are the fees. It doesn't say what his duties are where you look at the original contract that was done four years prior, it says specific duties and responsibilities that he would be done. 
as a lawyer, I don't know if that contract's illusory. Okay, thank you. I move that the public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and the township <laughs> clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Burstein? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Saul Eglo? Yes. Mr. Wasserman? Yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Ordinance 2560 20. Ms. Thal Eglo, you are scheduled to sponsor this ordinance. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2568 20. Capital ordinance authorizing the acquisition of a new pumper fire engine, partial funding, and appropriating therefore the sum of $95,000 and providing that sum such appropriated shall be raised from funds available in the township's reserve for the fire equipment. Alex, maybe just want to explain why there's partial funding in parentheses in that? Uh, yes, because other portions of this, uh, this fire truck, which is being acquired, were funded through capital ordinance um, over the last two years. This is just an additional amount uh, to finish that funding. Perfect, thank you. Tonight, I'm sorry, tonight is the time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. Um, seeing nobody, I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with the law. Second. Tara seconded. Yeah. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Burstein? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Thal Eglo? Yes. Mr. Wasserman? Yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Thank you. Old business. Ms. Thal Eglo? You mentioned that you have an item of old business that you'd like to address. Right, I did have some questions for you and Mr. Wasserman. Since, um, I watched the SID board meeting. It was very, very well run, but um, I had some questions. The assessment is based on the previous budget of 205,000. Andrew Morgan, one of the board members said that this amount is not set in stone and rather off the cuff, he goes, so the SID board can actually ask for a million dollars of which Mr. McDonald said, well, that would never happen. But what is, I mean, right, what I'm saying is like, what is the um, parameters of that the SID board will have to follow? And I know everything has to be approved by the township committee, but that doesn't mean it won't be approved. So like, what will be the protection for the property owners? And, um, my point was that this will not be billed to them in 2022. So the number is really an unknown. And when I was looking at one of the um, charts that you had put up, the people in the B4, their assessment went dr drastically down because now you have other people picking up people who've never paid into that. And so I think that's like really just something to be concerned of, to be questioned. Like, how is this going to be protective? And that, you kept referring to five districts. And I also want to know, District um, 2 is Mars Avenue. District 3 is Upper Milburn Avenue and Chatham Road. And B4 is a downtown. What are the five districts that kept being referred Ch to? Chatham Road is, Chatham Road is yeah. separate than, um, than that Upper Milburn Avenue. Okay, so that's four. Uh, and you have the area uh, south of Trader Joe's, that Wyoming Avenue. That's a, it's not part of B4? The Commons, B2. The, the Commons. Commons, okay. So I wasn't sure of that. And this goes to Mr. Footer's point. You said that in the past, the DMDA never borrowed money. So when you redid the ordinance for this new SID, you took out the language that said they could not borrow from a private entity, but they could be borrowed from a 
private, from a public, meaning the township committee, or if they find loans. And Andrew, and I think Germana and somebody else all said, well, we wanna keep that language in because we don't wanna tie our hands. We want to be able to borrow money. And I think Nadaj was the only one who said, maybe we should consider taking that language out. And to my point is, two, if you borrow money, you gotta pay it back, unless it's a grant, which should definitely be um, looked for. I think Milburn, we should always be looking for grants. So someone's gotta pay it back. If it's not the property owners, it's the township residence taxes. And I don't know if our township residents are aware of that. Um, I would. I would gather that nobody knows. And that also goes to the point now that half of this director you call human capital is going to be hired. So let's suppose she's gonna get $100,000, keep it round, might be 80, whatever. How does that affect the budget of 205,000? Are you then adding 50,000? Are you taking away 50,000? I think there's still a lot of um, open questions. So what I'm saying, when Mr. Footer, and I think he was very disappointed that he did send a letter and no one got it, although Mr. Parlevecchio said he saw it. Tracy Levine said she didn't see it. No one saw it. We all have seen that letter. And then Alex actually screen shared it. So it was there. So if we wanna be protective, why don't we put in the ordinance and change it, not by amendment, but an actual ordinance that Maybe the Sid, who's going to have a budget now fifty thousand dollars more because we, the residents, are picking up half of this executive director's salary. Why don't we put in language that they can't borrow money unless number one a grant, or they know it's a zero interest loan, like for PPEs, because that way they have a budget. Like all nonprofits, they should be um, forced, forced to adhere to their budget and they shouldn't have to borrow money. So I am speaking, I, I don't know if Mr. Footer's on or what Jeff was gonna to speak to, but as I was watching the meeting, I was picking up that concern that it wasn't really addressed. So that was before I'll just say, um, so Do Nidaj to, was, to answer that well, let me just, first. I'll just go through. I think that's pretty much it because no matter how you look at it, the money is gonna to have to be paid back. And yeah, and then I just want to say the last thing, I was very glad to hear that you said the board is going to or have met with our zoning secretary about the importance of revisiting to allow restaurants. I mean, that was brought up here twice and it was taken away. And I think that that is something really important that we do need. And the other thing is, um, two years ago, I had initiated um, a roundtable with the landlords and that was incredibly helpful. And I heard that Mana, I believe, said that you were going to reinstate that. So that was, so that's the positives. It was a well-run meeting, but I really am concerned about this budget that can go haywire. I think Marla's wonderful. She's a great presentation, but where is the protection for our property owners, especially the ones who have never paid into this, who have now given a huge discount to all the people who have paid into it, who we know in the past, we know this, we're never satisfied with the DMDA. It's not the same organization. We have much more community involvement. It's really heartening. But I think this is something that the SID board must consider if we, who selects that board, is overseeing that board. It's just a little blurry line. So now that's what I wanted to ask you about. We'll take a stab. Uh, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Well, I think. I think you see that, oh, okay, sorry, I, I will, it's a good suggestion. Um, I, I think if you, if you watch those meetings, and I think, it's, I think this is one of the points I wanna make is that we have a very dedicated group of trustees that are volunteers that are working really hard you know, to make the organization be responsive to the community, to the business owners and the restaurants. And that, that's one point, and, and they're very responsible, and we're working super hard. Um, and I think, you know, again, you got to keep in, in, I'd like to just point out that, you know, um, the reason for the bid is to support our businesses. That I know that there's disagreement. I know that, that, that people, you know, it's been called, you know, different names. But really, the reason is, is that there's a 17% vacancy rate. We, we're heading into a COVID, you know, we're heading into, uh, uh, you know, a COVID winter, you know, th you know I mm -hmm. think it's gonna be a very difficult environment for our businesses. And, 
we've put into place um, social media uh, ads, and we, we're doing a lot to support our businesses right now. And in terms of in terms of loans, if you listen to the meeting, I think that um, I think that we I think the board was concerned that if you were to um, take out uh, the ability for you know the SID to borrow money right now. It's possible that there might be a, a government program, you know, that might be at zero interest that, that we might be able to, you know, offer our businesses at some point. I mean, what if things got worse? Uh, we don't want to tie our hands. And, and I think that was the, the gist. The other thing was, is that anything that the SID does has to be approved by this board. And, um, and I think that that's, that's very clear. And I don't think that there's any, I don't think that there's, uh, uh, you know, I don't think I don't think anybody's looking to to borrow any money. I think we're just looking to support our businesses. So, Mayor, do you want to? No, jump I, in? I I think that that's the that is a uh, hundred percent correct. That that uh, the bid seed board will have oversight with their board of trustees that are residents, property owners, merchants, TC representation. Um, as well as the TC will have financial oversight. So should the should an opportunity arise or should a program that it may it may that the that the board of trustees of the bid wants to reach out for, it may be a, a situation where they are expecting to collect certain revenues and may not have them in, for a shortfall. I'm just I'm just surmising of, of a situation. So they may need to, uh, for the township to borrow on for a short term basis. This gives them some flexibility with of course, board approval of the township committee. And I think it was said you're gonna be on that board next year? I anticipate to be, yes. Right, so this is where the lines are blurred. I'm just looking for the protection of the tens of property owners and merchants who had gotten in touch with us as a TC board who, really asked us, the SID can be a wonderful thing. It's just, they were asking not to do it yet. So if we said, okay, we won't charge you to 2022. You really don't know what those fees are gonna be. So I think it's protective to say that money would not be borrowed because I don't think personally that the residents tax dollars necessarily who they don't have a say in that should be put on the hook for that. The residents have elected these officials to be fiduciary responsible individuals and over and oversee the the bid sit. So let's unlike, be responsible. Unlike un, un, uh, let me finish, please. Unlike 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 the previous DMDA, the the township committee did not have financial or any kind of fiduciary oversight. That's what makes right. this different. So this you will be one of the five should the need arise where the bid sid would have to borrow money it would not happen unless it, the tc has oversight and approval of those of right. those fiduciary expenses okay is that a three tc vote alex or a four tc vote the approval of the budget is uh, the approval not of the uh, first of the budget is three yes. and if they decide if the sid decides they have this opportunity to borrow x amount of dollars from um, so, and who, and then we have to approve that. Is that a three-person vote or a four-person vote? So much, much like, much like the the township itself, I would imagine that the that the SID uh, board of trustees would need to incorporate any such, you know, again in this circumstance where you're where you're uh, projecting that they go out for debt uh, would need to be included in their budget. Um, and they'd need to account for, you know, how that how that's being um, allocated in their budget. It's not something where they can, uh, again, to Mr. Footer's comments before, is a, not something where they can provide, uh, go through that budget process and say, all right, well, you know, the, the, the property owners are on the hook for this. I think they're going to have to provide that in their budget and to um, Committee uh, Mayor Lieberberg's point and Committee Member Wasserman's point, and even your point is that the, the protection lies in that that budget comes back here and the Township Committee is going to have to decide whether they feel that that is necessary for them to borrow money, whether they, whether they feel it is right for them to borrow money, whether you want to take the heat for allowing them to borrow money and put that in their budget. Uh, there's, there is a protection there, I think, in terms of, you know, when it comes back to this committee who is, uh, who has been you know, uh, 
prescribed to do that in the bylaws, um, that adds a protection to it. But it would be, so my long, long answer is three. Okay, so my interpretation is this, that it's not, if it's been the budget, they should ask for it in their budget. And it, in my interpretation is this something, as they all said, the unknowns, because we don't know, what if there's an opportunity six months into a city year that they say, oh my God, we want to do this, there's this loan available. Mm -hmm. So it's not in the budget, it's outside the budget and not, it would have to be again, brought to the TC independently and voted. And how many TC votes Three. would it take to approve that? Three. Okay. So I think that we should be more protective of, you know, what the monies are gonna be spent, the unknown, we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. And I think that um, a T, the SID should be able to stand on its budget and that should be what they expect to spend. And if there's grants available or zero interest loans, but I do not believe that it's appropriate to have it open-ended when their budget can change at any time, according to Andrew Morgan, and you all agreed. And then they can come to us at some later point and say, oh, you know what? We want to borrow this chunk of money. And then you're not, you've now promised the property it's not going to be on them. It's going to be on the residents. So that's not sitting that comfortably with me. I will be honest with you. And so, Richard, do you have, okay, so I guess Mr. Footer, I don't know if he's on there. Well, let, let's continue yeah. with old business. If there's, if, is there any other items of the committee uh, under old business? Um, Alex, is there gonna be snow pickup on tomorrow and storm or Thursday? I've been asked by people. I'm sorry. Will there be a garbage pickup oh. if there's a blizzard? What happens? Uh, tomorrow for sure. And um, Thursday, it will be touchy. Um, it, it, it will likely not happen depending on the significance of the storm, but we will certainly alert our residents uh, if that is canceled. Um, By reverse 911, just to those areas that have garbage pickup? That's correct. Okay, and also it. on the website and, those, and, 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 uh, and our social media channels. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the committee that has any other items of old business to discuss? Um, I'd actually like to just say something. By all means. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Before a public uh, comment, I just want to thank um, thank the town for the honor and privilege of serving this community for the past six years. Um, and I want to thank especially, well, thank all my co-committee people. I appreciate um, the years that we've served together for some one, for some more than one. Um, I wish you an interesting time. You have some good projects ahead of you. I think it will be interesting to watch how everything plays out and to be a par participant in that. Um, I really wanna thank, I wanna wish Jimmy good luck. It has been a privilege watching you develop in your um, in your role. And I'm very happy for you that you have a significant role that you are moving into. And finally, I really wanna thank Alex and your staff and Christine for your support and guidance over the years. I think just to this committee, be aware, I think you have probably the best of the best in Milburn and use them for their knowledge, their guidance, they, they're really fabulous. And I don't think we could have any better than we have. Um, so thank you for your service to the community, to Maggie and Sanjeev, good luck. And I look forward to uh, seeing what happens in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does any committee member have an item of new business to address? Yes, I do. Um, Alex, I sent you an um, article from the New York Times about um, 911s having a special social services professional. And since our joint 911 is multi municipalities, is this something that has come up on the joint 911 to have somebody within the um, office? The what do you call it? The dispatch center. The dispatch. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So, is it was that something that they have ever considered? Is that something they should consider talking about? 
Um, to my knowledge, this has not been discussed yet. Um, however, you know, we we did just recently get a new uh, executive director mm -hmm. at the Mountain Valley Emergency Communication Center. And so new ideas, new thoughts are, are you know, still flowing through uh, as they get the the uh, the lay of the land with the job. So I would anticipate that, you know, some ideas will pop, but this one in particular has not yet. Yeah, I don't know who's going to be the joint 911 liaison, but obviously you will be. So I think if that's something you can bring up, I think that could be an important step forward because this is an issue with emergency. And I know from being on the squad, this is a big issue, mental health calls. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And my last thing, I know um, we had spoken about putting plexiglass dividers up here. And I know we're all interested in, excited for the reorg to have Maggie and Sam G sworn in. And we only have four people sitting up here. And if we have five, I'm wondering if what your feedback from the um, DPW was about putting plexiglass so we can have a more comfortable and safe sitting seating arrangement up here. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult um, in particular to put um, plexiglass up there as we, you know, we have to get everything cut to a particular shape to be there. Um, that's not always going to necessarily be there with the, but uh, with, with other boards that may be coming into the building and things like that. Well, I mean, um, removable, not permanent. No, no, no. I, I understand. Um, however, uh, based on the, based on the current situation, we were able to, to, to function. Um, I think that sort of has to, uh, you know, be addressed or evaluated with the, with the oncoming uh, committee members and, and see what best to do. But if, if that is the case, we will have some time to do that. Um, however, I don't know that that may, that would 100% um, impact um, the reorg, but, but um, certainly able to look it's, into it. It's soon, it's January 1st, the reorg? January 5th, yeah. 5th, 5th. And we do anticipate to have five members up here and a limited audience participation. Correct. And I mean, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm sort of in a position to comment on the efficacy of plexiglass and how that would work up on the um, up on the dais. But 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 certainly something that I can, can can ask Jim DeSanto, who I did ask already. But, oh. you know, I know that he had difficulty in locating it at that time uh, to purchase it and cut it and get it get it sized right for the for the day. So, but but I appreciate your comment. I'll, I'll make sure that I ask for it. We further. want to continue to be safe up here. Sure. Thank you. That's it for me. Public comment. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, clearly state your name and address, and speak loudly so your comments may be understood. There was also a properly noticed remote option for those who could not attend. If you call in and would like to comment, please press star six now. Whenever an audience or committee member reads from a prepared statement, please email a copy to our township clerk, town clerk at milburntwt.org to help facilitate an orderly meeting. You will be prompted when there is 30 seconds remaining and you will be limited to one three minute session. This is a business meeting and please do not address professionals or staff directly and please direct all your comments to me. Each individual will be given one opportunity. I will now open the public comment period. Yes, hi. Jean Pasternak, 342 Hobart Avenue. I have a few comments and some questions. Um, as a former elected official for the Milburn School Board, as well as a 23-year taxpaying resident, I have found attending these meetings regularly this year, there's an astonishing lack of transparency and accountability. It's my profound hope that the newly constituted Township Committee will follow the laws and regulations for New Jersey municipalities to the letter and spirit and will not continue this year's pattern of poor information sharing, rejection of public debate on important issues facing our town, businesses, and residents, and will welcome all public input, especially that which is in disagreement. Contrarians often have the right answers in hindsight they have the right to be listened to with respect and your full attention. Milburn residents, businesses, and taxpayers are entitled to a full accounting of how their taxpayer funds are being allocated and spent. We should understand fully the sources of these funds. 
Why are we not routinely seeing a bill list, check register, and all details regarding our funds entrusted to you? Sorry. I was shocked to learn that the municipal attorney's law firm received over a half a million dollars this year. That's a lot of money relative to the township budget. How did this half million dollars spent on legal fees to a single law firm come to be? He was paid a lot of money, yet the township committee was given advice that resulted in not complying with the law. This question was raised formally by a member of the public and there was no answer from any township committee member. We're entitled to know this and understand it and we should get an answer and it shouldn't be lingering. So I hope we can get an answer this evening. Three, what's the source of funds for the Taylor Park Art Project? I think it was already brought up. Um, I'm not sure I still really understand. Are these monies coming from somewhere this year or is that for next year or where is that money coming from? Third, um, what's the, what's the um, monies as far as the SID budget again, to be clarified? Um, it was, I think it was stated that th the monies for this coming year and next year I believe we're coming from people retiring and then therefore this, this year's budget, that money from retiring people will be used for the SID budget this year and next year. If that's not the case, could that be clarified? And um, I just wanna add the mayor uh, at the SID meeting made uh, the comment, the TC provides checks and balances and you repeated that again tonight. I hope you'll honor your words Will you tonight move to amend the SID ordinance to ensure without any doubt that there will be no risk to Milburn businesses of their hard earned tax dollars paid to Milburn in the form of an assessment allowing the SID to borrow or purchase beyond their budget. And lastly, although it's been asked many times before, the question has gone unanswered, we're entitled to an answer. What was the federal investigation that started three years ago about? Did it involve the police department, public works, township committee? We should know whatever information is possible to share with the public as we are paying for the legal defense involved in this investigation. In closing, thank you for your volunteer work, those retiring, and best of luck to, the, to those of you who are leaving the committee. Happy holidays. May we have a few on the uh, yes let's or... let's let's proceed yeah they're, they're there oh. Okay. Mr. Yep. Oh. hello um yes uh thank you um i have a statement on December 1st, I appeared before you and delivered a statement regarding the ability for the SID to be able to borrow money and place the repayment of loans and interest for those loans as an encumbrance on commercial property owners and stakeholders. Mayor Lieberberg and Committeeman Wasserman said that the SID could not do that without Township Committee approval and that they did not see that as anything that would happen and furthered such comments as stating that the township committee would have final decision making to prevent that from happening. I asked for ordinance 2561-20 to be amended to state that property owners are indemnified against future financial encumbrances due to loans incurred by the SID and that the ordinance should state that any loan repayment and interest due on loans to the SID be forbidden from being included in succeeding years SID budgets and from being passed on to commercial property owners through assessment. You stated it would, could be addressed by the SIDS bylaws. The comments from me and from you sounded as though we were agreeing on the issue, but you were reluctant to, to amending the ordinance to give commercial property owners any protection through the ordinance. After some further exchange between us, the last word mentioned coming from the township committee was, quote, Give us until our next meeting. We will deal with it, unquote. You promised me that it would be discussed at this meeting and it's not even on the agenda. A couple of days after that township committee meeting, a strong suggestion was given to me to prepare a written statement to read to the SID Board of Trustees regarding this issue. I didn't agree with it as I believe then and I still do believe that this should be addressed in the ordinance and not in their bylaws. However, I did prepare a written statement 
sent it in to be distributed to the board trustees and waited for confirmation of distribution as I had requested. I was told at the beginning of their meeting that they had not received it. So I started to inform them with an overview, but was told by the board chairman that it would be taken up later in the agenda. The attitude as I read it was dismissive. I respectfully stopped and waited for the appropriate time during the meeting to continue. When my topic came up for discussion, I was not given the opportunity to iterate the points. Again, no one had seen my letter, but Mr. McDonald did have it ready to show and share on his screen. Mr. Wasserman chose to speak to my issue. I don't recall ever having to need or want for anyone to present my case in my stead. He named the topic, chose to give a brief paraphrase of what I had presented before the Township Committee on December 1st, left out significant points, and then took a sharp left turn and presented his own opinion as he did at the Township Committee meeting. What I learned from the December 8th SID board meeting, board members were asked to vote on any, uh, vote on my issue without all the facts. Board members are not knowledgeable of the state laws surrounding SIDs. Board members were never given the opportunity to be knowledgeable that the SID could borrow money, yet still indemnify property owners and stakeholders from the encumbrance of loan and interest repayment. Board members may not be able to amend their bylaws. The SID bylaws are incorporated in the SID ordinance 2561-20. The township committee could not amend the SID bylaws via a resolution. A resolution cannot amend an ordinance. Only an amending ordinance can amend an ordinance. The board chairman was dismissive, verging on disrespectful in his attitude to me. This SID is not, this SID is not and will not be responsive to and representative of those party, parties paying for the existence with that attitude. Thank you very much. I wish those retiring well. And Jimmy, I wish you the best of luck in your new endeavors. Thank you. Ms. Urso can go next. Good evening, Perry Urso, 506 Milburn Avenue, Short Hills. I'd like to first take a moment, wish committee woman Burstein, and tell her how grateful we are for her commitment and service to our com community and this committee serving as TC committee woman and mayor, a true townswoman. You will be greatly missed and we thank you. Mayor Lieberberg, sadly, I didn't know you before the SID. However, knowing that you will be leaving behind a disaster of a legacy called the SID, your lack of trust, transparency and respect will never be forgotten. You had the opportunity to unify the five districts, lead by example, and you have failed to do so. I hope your successors will learn from your mistakes. I do echo Mr. Futter's statements. We strongly urge the committee to take a pause on the SID ordinance for the following reasons. The entire process was rushed. There's absolutely no buy-in with the expanded district. Three of the committee members' votes were tainted in the process. Those who voted in the favor of this ordinance, I truly believe don't even understand what they have voted yes for. One member is leaving, one member is still involved with litigation, and the other has really truly no qualifications to this committee and oblivious to the tax portion of what the burden is gonna be on the commercial tax um, property owners. Additionally, how many of the TC members would be affected after the 16 months when the SID would be solely posed on commercial property owners? And who gives you the right to use the entire community's tax money for something commercial property owners don't want, they're not asking for, and they don't need the help. It's simply shameful. A pause would give the taxpayer an opportunity to ask to speak with the incoming TC members, be open to discussion so they can fully understand, hear our comments and concern, and why not the SID? Perhaps as new members, they will have the courtesy to let us be heard. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Enjoy the holiday season. Ms. Stone? No, please. Not ready. We have uh, Sarah Sherman. 
Sarah Sherman, South Mountain Civic Association. Uh, I would like to thank both Cheryl Burstein and Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg for their service. I have, I want to say that Ms. Burstein was a former South Mountain resident and member of the association. I've worked with her on the ad hoc traffic committee for South Mountain in Washington, and I have been serving with her on the Milburn Public Library Board. Uh, Mayor Lieberberg, you have always been responsive to the needs of your constituents and you have been adept at bringing community groups together. I will always associate you with the Mill Wheel Project. I met so many people through that and I think it was one of the most positive events we have had uh, in the community. Uh, I wish you both very well and thank you for your service. And Jimmy, I wish you well as uh, in addition in your new endeavors. Thank you. Good evening, thank you. Can you hear me fine? Hello? Yes. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dominique Gerso, residing at 508 Milburn Avenue. I would like to echo the previous public comments of Mr. Richard Footer. Um, I do believe our question should be answered. The board has, majority of the board has not done that and chose to neglect giving answers to questions. And I don't know the purpose of that, but it's not very professional. I also found it interesting to hear that earlier tonight, Deputy Mayor Prupis opening statement that I quote, she said, if the public feels they are not being heard to please reach out. I find this very interesting as herself, Mayor Jackie Lieberberg and Richard Wasserman and Alex McDonald have failed to answer questions of people's legitimate concerns. So I think that statement is funny and contradictory. Um, as well as her quote saying, thank God Jackie Lieberberg will be helping assist us on the SID. Nobody wants this. That's very, very unprofessional term as well to use. Um, as far as committee member Wasserman saying that Jackie Mayor Lieberberg has done a great job helping restaurants and merchants. Maybe this is for downtown, but you're forgetting about Upper Milburn Avenue and all of Short Hills Milburn. Um, majority of the board has denied when merchants and property owners like my parents and other people asked them and invited into their place of business to have a meeting discussing their concerns of the SID firsthand and they denied having that meeting. So where is their hearing people's concerns? I find that illegitimate comment. I think it is appropriate to pause the SID until litigation is resolved. Also, as there are new two TSA um, township committee members joining in early of January 2021. Um, people like my parents and many other property owners would like to speak to these new TC members so they are able to hear their concerns firsthand and how they can help the property owners that are long, long term business owners and long term contributing taxpayers to this town deserve that time given to them and really be heard. Uh, with these two additions to the TC, one being Tara Prupis, existing TC member and Mayor Jackie Lieberberg leaving. This is an opportunity to give a fresh start to have a new collaborative TC to hear property owners and merchants concerns about the SID and hopefully this could change in the new year. We as property owners would like to officially ask the whole new TC board to take us up on the offer to, to meet together on this matter, to hear our opposition as three minutes in a mini meeting is not suffice and does not properly do justice to explain our position and concerns based on this SID. We would like to wish everyone a safe and happy holidays as we are all in this together during these uncertain times. Thank you. Hello? Yes. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, Marilee Riesbeck, 91 Whittingham Terrace, Milburn. I would just like to thank Mayor Jackie Lieberberg for her leadership this past year, especially during this unprecedented time of COVID. Jackie, your guidance, sensitivity, patience, and especially your communication to the public have been outstanding. Of course, you've done a great job during all three of the years that, of your term, including last year as deputy mayor. Thank you for all you've done for the community. I'll miss you on the township committee. I do hope you'll continue to remain involved in township activities after you're no longer on the township committee. I would also like to thank Cheryl and Jimmy for all of their contributions to our community and wish them both well in future endeavors. Before I close, I would just like to say that as someone who attends almost all the township committee meetings, that personally, I am weary of hearing the endless complaints and attacks on the township committee from the same five or six residents at every single meeting. Always critical, never constructive. I'm hoping this changes in 2021. On that note, happy holidays and a happy and very healthy new year to everyone. Uh, yes, hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, uh, Jennifer Vatena, 64 Great Hills Road. Um, first, I uh, just want to uh, mention that I appreciate all the time commitment the current committee town members uh, made and continue to make with the best intent to help this town. And uh, one also thank both the committee women for their service um, and uh, wish you well in your future. Um, I do have a question um, about the legal expenses on this town. I've heard that the town has spent um, something like half a million on legal fees this year. I'm not sure if this is a precise number. So what I wanted to ask was how can we as citizens get the exact number more importantly, how can we get a breakdown of what these fees entail? What part of it is being spent on litigation? What part of it is being spent on normal legal proceedings that happen in, in any other year? So um, I'd like to understand who I can follow up with for this. Um, and that's it. And wish you all happy holidays. But yeah, who can I follow up uh, on this? Uh, <clears throat> the finance department or the administrator's office would be happy to help. Um, is that information I can, I, I am allowed to get, I can yeah. request for it and of I course. should be able to get. Yeah, of course. Um, you can, you can, uh, you can contact the administrator's office at, uh, you know, the number is on the website, uh, 973-564-7075. And we'll be happy to help you. 564? 564-7075. Thank you very much. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, just wanted to take a quick moment to um, thank Jimmy and Carol for their service. Um, Carrie, Carrie, we can't can hear, hear you. you. You're muffled. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. That's where it was going in at. Uh, just wanted to give a big smoochy hug and kiss to Mayor Jackie. Wish I could do it in person. Um, you have been singularly helpful to so many members of our population. And every time the Melbourne Ed Foundation ever asked you anything, your answer was simply, what can I do to help? Every time the schools have asked for anything, and especially last year's senior class, your answer was simply, what can I do? And I think it's a wonderful 
tribute to you that so many people have mentioned how wonderful you've been to this town. And I was thinking that it's probably your PTO background. And if you can manage and be a great PTO president, you can do anything. So I was thinking that you could maybe recommend to other members of the community um, who are active in the PTOs to maybe look at the township committee and volunteering and other aspects for the town. So anyway, that's it. Thank you so much and everybody have a great holiday. Uh, hi, can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, great. This is uh, David Boyko, 30 Farmstead Road in Short Hills. I'm not going to offer a smoochy hug and kiss because I don't think my wife would appreciate that. But I do want to offer a salute and thanks to Mayor Lieberberg for all of our hard efforts and leadership during these unprecedented and trying times we've all experienced during the last year. It's been a long road, but you certainly put your heart and soul into it. And I thank you for that as a resident. Uh, we'll miss you as mayor going forward. And uh, best wishes and continued success to Cheryl and Jimmy as they move on and a safe holiday season to all. Did she put her hand down from the last yeah. time? Oh, she's okay. I don't know who it is. Dominique, Dominique Urso. Urso. Oh, she okay. I didn't realize that. So she's already spoken. Yes. Thank you. Now we'll continue with anybody else who has not had the opportunity to speak. Jamie Scruto, 77 Jefferson Avenue, Short Hills, speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I just want to uh, thank former Mayor Burstein and uh, Mayor Lieberberg for your service to the township. Um, having spent, uh, as a, a lot of the members of the community have said, a lot of time watching meetings remote, coming to meetings, you know, first coming in during um, Ms. Burstein's uh, beginning of her tenure and seeing the changes that have gone on, the opportunities that both of you have created um, and a lot of the physical things that we've seen in town. Um, you know, and, and, and the use of the park, the introduction of the winter walk in collaboration with all the business districts, um, you know, year, years ago and uh, just all the, I think a lot of the innovation that has gone on um, and the collaboration with the schools, especially. So wanna thank you both, wish you the best, wish Jimmy the best, his future and um, happy new year. Looking forward to a, as everybody said, a, a healthier 2021. Mm -hmm. thank you. Nancy Stone, 10 Fielding Road, Nancy and David Fine Jewels and style by Nancy and David. I wanna thank Cheryl for an amazing um, relationship that we fostered over the years. You've been a tremendous asset to the business community and helped when asked and very much needed. Jackie, I wanna thank you for your service because in spite of our differences, your effort and your heart you wear on your sleeve and I respect that and I will always admire someone who volunteers their time and effort and that's something to be commended. I want you to at some point take out your smartphones and Google search the following. New Jersey and the Open Public Records Act and Montclair Business Improvement District. What you'll find is a very interesting article. And it was a state, it was 2000, it was updated in two, a landmark court ruling issued on Oprah rules for Montclair Business Group, attorneys say. 2000, was updated on 2019, but it was from 2014, not 1958. 
A state appeals court rules last week that the corporation running Montclair's business in Pruvick District is a public agency subject to the Open Public Records Act. Above is a January 10th photo of the commercial district. It goes on and on. But one of the things that it noted in the article, but what started with an email to the group's executive director led last week to what appears to be a landmark court decision declaring that the entity is a public agency subject to the state's Open Public Records Act. You can go on to read it. In the public records that were received, I want to highlight some of the 2020 shameful billings to date. Mr. Falcone billed to date over $550,000. I spoke to friends of mine who are very prominent attorneys. The average bill should be about 200,000. So what does that say to me? That says neither nobody's paying attention to what he's doing or we're doing something wrong or you guys are doing something wrong because you're getting sued like heck. Not necessary. I budgeted about 150,000. So I'm gonna give him an extra 50, 200,000. So I found 2020 TC spending highlights under this mayorship. Falcon unnecessary billings, 350,000. The vision plan at this time was not necessary at 189,000. The proposed SID budget at 215,000, not necessary at this time. The TC portion of the executive director salary coming out of the residence or the SID budget, 50,000. That's a grand total of wasted money. Most residents have no clue of $804,000. There's also the SID Instagrams that we spent, but I wanted to give you this form, which should appear on the website from the Montclair, the um, open public records request form that should appear on your website. And it's just so disheartening because, you know, people spend the time and for Mary Lee, who I've had lunch with, we've discussed before our differences. It's the same people. And you were part of the same five people that showed up to got you to where you are, Tara. And it was the persistence. I'm not interested in being up there, but I do give my time because I do care. And I really, really, in last note, wanna thank Diane because we've been opposite and I really appreciate the friendship that we fostered in the last year. And we might not agree on many things, that's okay, but you've been open-minded, helpful. And I hope Sanjeev, that you are open-minded. You showed a hint of that the last meeting and that's beautiful to see. And I'm really looking forward to that. Maggie, I never saw you at a meeting. This is the first time maybe you've been on Zoom, but I hope you're open-minded to listening to the business people that don't agree with this. And maybe the two of you will be the difference on that board because we do need the help. The business community is asking for it and we hope you're open-minded to listening. I welcome you anytime to my, I have a beautiful store. You're welcome anytime. My door is always open as Tara knew when she started her venture. Yes or no, my door was open and I let you in. And I just want you to know that we all have the same goal doesn't matter how we get there. It matters how we get there, but it shouldn't be divided. We should be more unified. Happy holidays and enjoy your retirement. <laughs> I don't think it'll be a retirement, but whatever. I just want to wish everyone to remain, stay safe, remain healthy in these extraordinary holiday seasons. And if you have the ability, think of the people that don't have the ability to eat, make some contributions to various food banks throughout 
the state as my family has done for this holiday season. During the holiday season, we're talking past each other. Everyone should take a time out, step back, read the state enabling statute that creates bids. Also go back and read the 1992 ordinance that created the first bid. When you approve a bid budget and you even go to the state's website, you need two hearings. There's a second hearing. You never had a second hearing approving the calendar year 2020s budget for the SID. That's in your, the original ordinance. It's in the state statute. I've been offering you my help since July. Please listen to me. If you don't listen to me, I can't stop other people for what they will be doing. And they're doing that throughout this county and throughout the state now. Please stay, I want you to stay safe. I'm not here to hurt you. Go back. Do not make statements without reading the state enabling statute first. That's where everything starts from. Look at that. I also sent you the pleadings that were filed yesterday. I don't know if they were delivered to you. Please look at the pleadings that Milburn filed in the Bear Properties case. You need to start examining the work product that's being delivered that taxpayers are paying for. Again, stay safe, remain healthy during this holiday season. Before we adjourn, I'd like to wish everyone a joyous holiday season, good health, and a safe new year. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. May I have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Uh, committee, the, Matt would like to have a picture in front of the chair when okay. you're done.